Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing a one-sample t-test using Excel. In counseling research, we use the one-sample t-test. When we have a sample drawn from a population with a known mean. So we have a known population mean. We draw a sample from that population. And we want to determine if the mean of our sample is different than the population mean. So we want to know if our sample is different than what we would see in the population. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have here in Excel, let's assume that these scores come from an anxiety inventory with a higher score representing a higher level of anxiety. What we, we would want to determine here is if our sample scores are different than the population. So notice this is different than an independent samples t-test where we have one dependent variable like this, but it would be divided into two groups. There are no groups in a one sample t-test, just the sample and a population mean. So moving over to column D, you can see I have population and sample. And over here I have sample size, mean, and standard deviation. First, I'm going to enter in the population mean. And this is known as a parameter. In this case, let's assume that the population mean is 50. So the average score on this anxiety inventory is 50. And over here under sample, we need three statistics, sample size, the mean, and the standard deviation. So I'll start with the sample size. That's going to be equal sign count and then the range of values here on the left and that's A2 through A41. So we can see that we have a sample size of 40. For the sample mean it's going to be equal sign average that's the function in Excel and then again A2 through A41. So to make that selection faster, I just use control shift down arrow. We can see the sample mean is 47.8. And then for the standard deviation, we want to use the sample standard deviation, stdev.s. You see that here. Notice there is an stdev.p. That's a population standard deviation we want to use the sample standard deviation. And again, the range is going to be A2 through A41. And we have a sample standard deviation of 6.03. So let's take a look at the equation for the T statistic. T equals the sample mean, that's X bar, minus the population mean, that's the Greek letter mu, divided by the standard error of the mean which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So I'm going to calculate the value of the T statistic and then calculate the associated probability value. So I'm going to start with the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is going to be equal to the sample size, so equal sign, and then cell E2 here, the sample size, minus 1. So we have 39 degrees of freedom. I don't need that statistic to calculate the T statistic, but I will need it to calculate the probability value. Next we have the numerator, and that's fairly straightforward. It's the sample mean minus the population mean, so equal sign and 47.8 minus 50. And notice this is a negative number, negative 2.2. Then the denominator is the standard error of the mean. That's the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So it'll be equal sign, standard deviation in cell E4 here, divided by the square root, SQRT, of the sample size, cell E2. That's 0.954. So as you can see from here, calculating the T statistic is fairly straightforward from this point. It's equal sign the numerator divided by 
the denominator. So it's negative 2.307. So at this point, we don't know if that's statistically significant or not. Now let's assume that our alpha is set at 0 0.05. So we're going to calculate the probability value associated with this t statistic. And I'm going to calculate the critical value. You really only need the probability value but I think it's valuable to understand how we compare the t statistic to the critical value. So I'm going to calculate the critical value as well. So I'll start here with equal sign and this is going to be t dot dist dot 2t. That's the function. It returns the two-tailed student's t distribution. That's the function I'm going to use here and it has two parameters x which is going to be the absolute value of the t-statistic and the degrees of freedom. So for the absolute value of the t-statistic it'll be a, b, s, absolute value, and then the t-statistic value in cell E11, and then for the degrees of freedom cell E6, it's 39, and we have a probability value here of 0.026. Before I interpret this probability value, I'm going to quickly calculate the critical value. It's equal sign t dot inv dot 2t returns the two-tailed inverse of the student's t distribution. And you can see it accepts two arguments. Probability, in this case we're going to use the alpha value, so it's 0 0.05, and then degrees of freedom, cell E6. So we can see the critical value is 2.023. And notice here that the absolute value of the t-statistic is greater than the critical value. So we know in this instance we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And of course we know that from the probability value as well. 0 0.026 is less than the alpha of 0 0.05. So we would reject the null hypothesis that there's no difference between the sample and the population. So here we would say the sample is different than the population. So the observed anxiety scores in our sample are statistically significantly lower than the average anxiety score. I hope you found this video on performing a one sample t-test in Excel would be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.